this is Will the Werewolf, and this is Werewolf the Podcast, episode 87. I just got to say thank you to those people who have reviewed my podcast and, and spread it out and shared it, and um, some love it and some hate it. That's fine, I don't mind about that. I think you have to be of a certain mindset to enjoy this stuff, to be honest. But thanks to those who share it, and if you could share it and review it and stuff on things, that would be wonderful. I would love you very much indeed. I'm just going to carry on with the story, because it's that time of the week. The small alarm went off next to my bed. A winking red LED flashed. I shot up into a sitting position. This was it! I'd been waiting for this day for such a long time. It was finally here. I was so excited that I almost pooed. It was like Christmas for werewolves. It was an opportunity I had dreamed of. So wonderful. I stepped gingerly from my bed, being followed by Fen, who had wandered through the wall and greeted me due to my awakened state. He was excited too. We'd talked about this day many times. What would happen? What would we do? We'd planned and and dreamed. You can guess, I suppose, we were very excited. Do you get the point that we were very excited? I moved to the TV on the wall and pushed the button on the bottom left that would give me an entire screen full of all the CCTV images in the building. They were there. They were in the building. They were in the garage. Two of them. Two people were in my home and trying to work out... How to open the garage doors from the inside. This was amazing. We had him. We had him. Fen and I looked at each other briefly. Well, we are the only ones who can see each other, so there's no point in anyone else looking. And to be honest, there was no one else present anyway. Then we noticed a third person in the garage. How had we missed him? He was bright yellow like, well, like Pikachu. They'd quickly moved around the vehicles, lifting the covers and checking what was underneath them. The new person had stopped by my E-type Jag, lifted the cover and stood back in awe. I mean, I could see that they really appreciated the fuck out of the car. It is rather remarkable, though. I won't go into too much detail because I know it drives some of you mental, but let me brag a little about the car. A silver-painted, original Series 1 six-cylinder. It is a real collector's piece, as every part of it is original and scarce. Scarce in this day and age, due to the beautiful thing being made of substandard, crappy, mild steel and brazened tubing. I have no idea why they made this unique creation out of crappy stuff. E-types in the past just melted into rust, just as you looked at them, parked in your drive. Anyways, I'll not go any further into the story of the car because that is not what you're here for, but let me just say one thing. I appreciated that they appreciated this car above the others in the room. Many of my vehicles were worth a lot more money, but none were as aesthetically pleasing to this compared to this this sexy E-type. The two thieves by the door were stopped in their respective functions by what I assume was the call of their compadre. They wandered over to join the third thief, slowly, as the cover was seductively removed to reveal the whole of its beauty. And it was done like, I suppose, a stage magician in residence does as they reveal the trick. They both stopped a few paces from the car and crossed their arms and just stared and stared at the vehicle. I could see that they were so appreciative of its fine lines and subtle styling. Well. Well, came telepathically into my mind, Fen reminding me I should be doing something horrible, not just watching these thieves appreciate my lovely car. It was a lovely car. A lovely car to look at. To be honest, it drove like a piece of shit. No brakes, and, well, it couldn't really go around corners, but it was so pretty. Hmm? Oh, Oh, yes, it was time to start the fun plan that we'd got together just for this happening. I turned to the home control page on the computer. This was where I controlled all those important things in my house, like the temperature and moisture content of the garage air. It also had all my lights and anti theft toys to choose from. Some of these anti theft toys were created just for me. The difference with most of my burglar beating kit was that it was about keeping them in the building so we could play with them. 
I don't want to keep them out. I want to keep them in. I thought I would start off with like a a subtle hint that something was going badly for them. Just, you know, a little shock to start the game as it were. A warm up for the main course. They were now in my house and were not getting out with my permission. Oh, the plan was coming into reality. I'd wished for this for such a long time. As they stared at the car, I turned on the audio input from the garage so I could hear them wax lyrical about my beauty so that they could get a better view of it I decided to turn on the single spotlight above at the correct angle to bring out the wholesome beauty of the car this was the first step to making them think that something wasn't right one of the thieves is wandering around the car letting a thank goodness gloved hand languish over her curves and paintwork The car, I mean, not not the thief. It was an almost sexual voyeuristic experience watching someone else enjoy her as much as I did. Nearly as much as I did. I sometimes think that people can get a lot from the sense of touch, but this person was enjoying her in full. The other two were chatting about the fine-spoke wheels when the spotlight came on. Silence. They all looked up at the light and then around. They were initially frozen to the spot before considering what had happened. What the fuck? Thief one whispered, looking at Thief two. Nothing more was said as the group took on the look of meerkats on sentry duty, looking out for, I don't know, snakes? Thief three by the car spoke first. There's no one about. Must just be a movement sensor on the light. She looked around. Definitely a she. Pretty cool idea. Each car would light up as you got to it. Smart. She was smart. How clever of her. Definitely, definitely now a she. Also, well done for my appreciation. But actually, they weren't on movement sensor lights. But sensor lights would be an excellent addition to the garage. They would be an addition when this was over. Why did I not thought of that? They were a really good idea. I could now sense that the appreciation of the car was over as they returned to their respective jobs. The woman kept moving around the garage looking at other vehicles. In her hand she had something like a a tablet or a, a large phone maybe that she kept referencing as she found the one she obviously wanted. The two men at the door struggled a little with the locking system. They had entered by the small access door that was part of the larger garage doors. The interesting point here is that the little door is called a wicket. Yes, a wicket. If you are into cricket... Which is mental if you are. A sport which takes days and you stop for tea breaks is not a great sport. Sorry. The wicket in the game is... Well, it originally came from the wicket gate. How interesting. Well, I think so. The fact's a lot more interesting than the game. Yeah. They now needed to open those large doors to get the items they wanted from the premises. I could not allow that to happen. So before they did much more damage, I gave them a blast of a couple of thousand volts and brought down my portcullis to stop them from escaping or taking the cars. Yeah, I had a portcullis. I would take it further than that, as it was not just a portcullis. It was a fucking portcullis. That's even better than just the portcullis. It was a steel monstrosity that slotted into place with such a a satisfying clunk. An idea, yes, stolen from the old castles, not to keep the advancing barbarian horde out, but to keep the fuckers in. As the two men picked themselves up off the floor after their par frying, they sat and stared at the gate before them in wonder. The severe burns on their hands were forgotten as the panic of being trapped ensued. Fen and I were already laughing at the shocked twins because they were shocked and, and smoky, but the alarm from being trapped was even more hilarious. Seriously, Will, that was right out of home alone. Shame it's not Marv and Harry in there. Although looking at these two, we may have the best of the British equivalents, said Fen. Gilly! Hey, Gilly, what the fuck's this? You never said nothing about fucking, uh, what's it called? Trapping fucking thing and stuff. What the fuck are we going to do now? Thief one babbled at the woman who was now standing by him. She had her hands on her hips and was looking at my portcullis and gave a heartfelt sigh. <sighs> moving one hand to her chin, where she took on the thinker's resolute but upright pose. Gilly, or Jilly, was obviously the brains of the group. 
Is it still live, Bry? She asked the man still sitting on the floor. He must have been as thick as fuck as he stood, walked over to the locking system and grabbed it. He did do it with his eyes closed, though, as though, as though that would somehow stop him from being shocked. He stood for a while, unsure what to do, then opened his eyes and smiled at the fact that he was not zapped to death. There seemed to be an element of relief from Jilly as she saw her man was not blown across the room. I don't think it was relief for poor Bry. It seemed, with her asking him to touch it again, that she didn't really give a fuck about the life of this poor menial. How fucking thick is this guy? asked the posit. Go on, Will, give him another blast. After stroking the E computer key, Fen and I giggled as the man went star-shaped and levitated off the floor. We'd ensured that the voltage, amperage or whatever had been enough so that he couldn't let go of his own volition. Only me taking my button off the E key would stop it. I lifted my finger and he flew away from the doors spinning horizontally, maintaining his star shape like a, like a shit human shuriken. Jilly was now looking around at the ceiling of the garage. I hope they'd done their respective homework before they'd broke in, so they should have registered the lack of visible cameras. The CCTV system was well hidden and there were no cameras to actually spot. It also allowed me to determine where these thieves were on the criminal lists. They were not the lowest of the low or the highest of the high. They were from the mediocre mid-range of knowledgeable folk in that particular sphere of work. Someone's fucking, fucking with us, she told the other two men. Oh, this one was bright. I like that. It may be somewhat of a challenge. What am I saying? They had no fecking chance. They had no idea they stepped into my warped world of torture. I was going to make the Saw film that we should have all seen. No actors. The Big Brother of Snuff Movies. Reality TV. At its... At its... At its realist. Is that a word? I don't know. Bry, you okay? She asked the man who was struggling to his feet once more. His jacket seemed to be slightly smoking as he rose, but it was just probably in my head and wishful thinking. No, Jillia, I fucking ain't it, he reported to her. I've been fucking blasted twice now. You'd know that was going to happen and all that. That was dangerous. She smiled at his musings. She was good because she knew if he was moaning and upright, he would likely be okay. The man must have been made from rocks or something, taking blasts like that and remaining upright. I must admit that judging by his IQ, he may have not yet realised he was dead from the shocks. Jay, you go check down that side for a way out. Bry, you go check down there for options. I'll check the door at the end. Nice and well organised, but... Only the elevator, portcullis and laundry chute would get access to the rest of the building or out. There were no other windows and no doors. They were mine. They were trapped and all mine. <laughs> Sorry. I turned and looked at my posit. I could see that he was so excited. He was excited as me at this bit of unfortunate fortune. Depending on, obviously, whether you're not you were either them or me or or whatever. Malcolm's communication line buzzed. I was hearing we had guest boss. Do you need me? Asked Malcolm, my erstwhile unalbert like savant servant. I could hear the film he was currently researching in the background. He took his job and hobby seriously did that, man. No, Malcolm, I should be fine. Although if you could help with the clean up later, that would be great. You know where I am, boss. We've plenty of bleach left from last Tuesday. Okay, Malcolm. Keep up the good work down there, I answered. Now it was time to stir the shit in the garage. I pressed the comm button to speak to those unfortunates down in the garage. Welcome. Welcome, my friends. This is the night of nights, the game of games. You got in, but there is only one way out of here. <laughs> this is the game of... Uh, um, death? I paused here as the posit looked at me in somewhat sort of patronising and disappointed manner. The fucking game of death, Will? The game of fucking death? That's proper piss poor. I have to admit, I felt a little humiliated at this point, but I had no choice but to push on with what was happening. I shrugged at him and pressed the comm button again. 
Three have entered, only one will leave. Will it be you? I hung up and we avidly looked at the screen to see the reactions of the people in the garage. They didn't do nothing. It was as though they had not been threatened at all. My God, they were true professionals, knowing that as long as someone is just threatening you, that they're not trying to kill you, so they were just getting on with trying to get the fuck out of there. Um, wrong channel, boss, came from Malcolm. Game of Death is also not the best scary name, though. Garage Com is channel three. It needs to be a little bit less tropey, in my opinion. Thanks, Malcolm. I, I, well, you know what? I, I, I thought I'd just run it past, you know, you two before putting it out there. Glad to get your and Fen's feedback. I clearly lied. Are you eating popcorn there? Hi, replied Malcolm. Salt or sugar? Honey and caramel, bath. Nice. I said as I came back to reality. Malcolm was right. Fen was right. I've got to get better at this shite. But at least with my technical fuck up, I had a, another go at being scary. Right. This time, come three. Oh, and I know some kind of scary voice changer. You have fucked up this evening, my friends. This is a trap that you have walked into. There is only one consolation. One of you will walk away from this, but only one. We are going to play a game. A game of d demise. <laughs> I got a huge tut from Fen. Mm. I ignored him to see what sweet things were happening on the lower floor. We could now see the three of them trying to work out what the fuck was going on. Jay had taken his hood down from his jacket and I could see him in all his glory. A middle-aged ginger-tall ginger bloke who had ginger hair and freckles. He looked somewhat old and young at the same time. I used to nickname these people Cronenbergs due to the lagers advertising about them being around, you know, since 1669. This guy was a Cronenberg because he could have been 16 or 69 years of age. Looking at his head alone, that is. He looked from gilly to bry with his arms lifted to that questioning point, taught him body language courses, which means someone is unsure. Bri looked at Gilly and obviously expected her to have, you know, all the answers to all the problems of the world. He also removed the hood of his fur lined parka and had the constant open mouth of the constant mouth breather. Saliva was apparent on his lips as it reached his chin. I thought that Bri must have been the crew's muscle, apart from the fact that he was spherical and short. Maybe this group of thieves believed in equality or got some sort of grant to employ the less able of the world. Gilly dropped the hood of her bright yellow rain jacket and smiled at the two of them, bringing a finger to her lips. She was waiting for silence from them. She was Korean. I can tell. I, I don't know how, I just can. She was Korean and very pretty. Her hair in buns on the side of her head and intelligence shone deeply in her eyes. A weird crew the gods had given me, but let's see what we could get them to do or to each other to get their freedom. The game is to survive. I could easily call the authorities and have you taken and arrested for this night's work, but I would rather see if you're willing to bend the rules a little with your ethics and morals to get out of here alive. That is not the only prize for you either. If one of you escapes, I will give you the ownership of the car that you were looking at tonight. My E-Type. To fuck I would, but hey... They didn't know that. They looked around trying to see where the sound was coming from. I smiled and sent Fen down to get close to them and see the sense of what they were up to. Here we go. For those that do not know. Fen is my over a thousand year old wolf soul best mate that lives with me. He is invisible to all except me and other were folk. To become a werewolf or a wolf we have to combine to become one being. He can also go and wander off by himself and give me feedback on his surroundings. In fact, we can share each other's senses and thoughts. You never know. He could be staring at you now and you would never know. But I could see where you were, you know, trying to insert that strangely shaped bottle of sauce. Ooh. Fen made his way down to the garage. I knew the first thing that these guys would do would they 
would collude to pretend that they were going along with what was happening, when in reality, they were just killing time until they could find a way to get out of here together. They, as close friends, would wish to work as a team to support each other, as you fucking foolish humans do. I've seen the movies. I ken this shit. It would take a while for me to break down these three's ethical and moralistic natures until they were at a point where they would try to kill each other to escape. I would have to work carefully on their weaknesses, prying them apart and getting them to swallow the hurtful guilt they would gain from being selfish. I would show them that whatever they believed right now now could be taken away and they could make those difficult decisions to kill friends in order to survive they could make those choices to survive life-threatening moments like the ones happening now i would humiliate them and push them beyond their respective limits make them choose sides make them lie to one another break promises allegiances would be born and smashed and i heard several gunshots over the comm before the posit had got to the basement. Gilly and Bry fell to the floor. Bry's head was partially pulverised as he sat down first, then, then fell to his back. Gilly held her abdomen with both hands as blood poured from the wound over her yellow Macintosh. She looked at Jay incredulously as he stood with a smoking gun. Fuck's sake, he shouted as he reloaded the gun with a new clip sliding the action to bring her round into the chamber before shooting the collapsing gilly in the head a couple of times to ensure she was, well, properly dead. I watched all this in shock. They were dead and gone. My mouth hung open as they fell to the floor in, in growing puddles of blood. What the fuck? What the f Fuck. I said over the intercom, not knowing my finger was still holding it open. I could now see the posit next to Jay looking up at the camera that I was watching through. He was laughing so hard that he had to sit down. That, <laughs> that was fucking awesome, he sent to my mind. I was frozen for once in shock. This was not what was supposed to have happened. They, they were supposed to be like dragged through emotional and physical hell before the eventual downfall of the friendship and the, and the society, as small as it was in this case, then the, the fight for life as friend, murdered friend, this was, this wasn't like the books and the films, this was not what psychology and philosophy had taught me. What the fuck? I repeated. Why, why did you, why, why did you do that? You're not, you're not supposed to have fucking done that, Jay. Fen was actually annoying me at this point. He was laughing so hard he was not helping me resolve this in my brain. I was struggling to concentrate on what, what had just happened. Jay turned away from the camera as he had no idea where I was watching from and dramatically let the gun spin around his trigger finger and then dropped to the floor as he lifted his hands. There you go, mate, he said. I tell you what, I will get rid of the bodies if you want as well. Can you leave the logbook unsigned for the new owner? It would be easier that way. Fuck. Where, where was the fun in this? Wait there, you fucking... You fuck... I ran to the elevator to go down and, and give him a piece of my mind. I got to the basement and shot through the doors, running towards the man. He bent down and picked up the gun, noticing I didn't have one. And then he pointed it at me. Hey... I think you may have forgotten something, mate, he said, showing me the weapon he had pointing at me and, you know, the fact that my hands were empty. Oh, fuck off, Jay, I told him. Do you really think you will get away with shooting me? You think I should be worried about you and that little fucking pea shooter thing you've there? He looked at me and, and kind of shrugged. Maybe, he said. I stood looking at him, sucking my teeth and trying to work out what to do. I could maybe just kill him and get it done with and pretend that this shit had never happened or, or maybe... <laughs> he shot me in the shoulder. I swayed back and looked at him. Again, he shrugged. You gonna let me out of here or do I have to shoot you in the other shoulder? He asked. Oh, 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 he was pissing me off now. Fen became one with me and we grew before the thief. This usually would have someone drooling as the shadow grew over them and the windows of hell that were my eyes opened to them. 
He seemed pretty calm, which was worrying. He just followed my growth with the point of the pistol. Fuck was the only thing that passed from his mouth. I snarled and moved towards him. He was about to be torn into strips and cured for human jerky. Yes, human jerky. He moved the gun and fired it in front of the jag. The concrete at the base of the jag chipped, flew up and scratched the bright chrome of the fucking bumper. Oh, that was unexpected. I looked at him. I think he could tell by my werewolf body language that I had not enjoyed the fact that he'd just done what he'd done. Hey, you come any closer and I'll put the rest of the clip in your fucking car. He told me quite sort of hurriedly. Hmm. Now, I know I could get the car repaired, but then it wouldn't be the original it had been. Ah, shit, what was I to do? I thought and changed back to my human form. Now, Jay, let's <laughs> let's not be too hasty, I told him. You realise if you do that, then you'd be dead, I asked him. Yes, I would be dead, and your one-off car would be fucked. He nodded towards my silver beauty and smiled. Would that be a good thing for you? Again, he smiled. I guess shooting you is going to do fuck all, but knowing people like you, and I am one of them, I know that if you hurt your car, that would be the most painful thing I can do to you. Especially that one. You'll not get another of those without loads of effort and lots of money. I don't want to hurt it, but I'll, I will to get the fuck out of here. I will also make a car junkie offer to you. This will probably make you want to let me go. I will give you my 1971 twin cam mark one lotus escort as a fucking present oh hmm that changes everything i thought i smiled at him what color well it's the original white but you can have it any color you want if you let me go i've already pumped about 12 grand into it what do you say he said as he took the gun from pointing at my baby I leaned against another blanketed vehicle as I thought. I kind of like this guy. He was devious and ruthless. Do you do this kind of stuff for a living, Jay? I asked him. It's part of me work. This was like a special order, but normally I work alone. You know, steal cars and parts and, and the people require and find it hard to source. He smiled. This was very interesting. He and I may actually have a future working together. Obviously, while I need him. I moved forward. He lifted the gun again. Not at me, but at the car. He had watched the wound in my torso heal. I liked the fact that he realised what would be the more significant threat. I put out my hand to him. He looked at it. You're just going to fucking rip my arm off, aren't you? No, I, I just want to shake yours and make a deal. I love the idea of the escort. Also, I may have business for you. I've always wanted... A Ferrari F40. He eventually looked down, took my hand, smiled. Don't we all? That's the end of the episode. Thanks for listening. If you want to join the Facebook group, go to the description. There's a link. There's other links down there, like books and Twitter and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. It'd be great to hear from some of you. Please share and review these podcasts if you can that would be wonderful and just last thing love you loads bye